Welcome to this channel guys, my name is Kevin Oduor. Today the Court of Appeal have actually directed all the public servants seeking the elective seats in August 8th general election to resign by tomorrow the 9th of February as it was directed earlier by the High Court. The three bench judge have decided that they have upheld the ruling that initially given by the High Court. As that was happening, there is really a need for Uhuru Kenyatta to reshuffle the cabinet. And this is because the exit from the cabinet have already started. But yesterday, there is something that happened. William Ruto uh, called on all the UDA members of parliament who are still in Jubilee to resign and officially join the Jubilee party. But I tend to think that that circular did not only target the Jubilee MPs, but it was also targeting William Ruto's people who are in government. Charles Keter, who was appointed as the Minister for Energy before being transferred to devolution in the latest government reshuffle, has actually led the exit from Uhuru's cabinet. He was led after that. He was also followed by John Munez, who is eyeing the Tur Turkana gubernatorial seat through the Azimula Umoja. And John Munez was in charge of petroleum, the seat that was left back vacant by Charles Ketar. Now, this has happened because Charles Keter is going to vie for Kericho gubernatorial seat. Remember, he was elected as a senator in 2013, but then he was taken from the Senate and given a CS position. That is what happened. Then that is why there was a by-election. Then Aaron Cheriot really won that seat, and he took the seat from Charles Keter. That is what happened. Now, guys, most importantly, what do you think of this exit? Because one, I think it is very strategic and it is supposed to send a message. What I'm going to expect is that the same route that Charles Keter has taken, the people who are in cabinet that are allied towards, uh, towards William Ruto are going to comply and follow suit. But I think for the record, I need to mention that the leaders that have really come out, uh, people in cabinet that have come out to announce that they were going to seek elective seats is Ukuri Yatani, who is in charge of treasury, is Peter Munya. Peter Munya, who was the first governor of Meru between 2013 to 2017, has not yet decided, but he had also trusted himself to go and challenge Kiraitu Murungi for Meru gubernatorial seat. The other one is CS in charge of water, Cecil Karioki, who is also eyeing Nyandarwa County gubernatorial seat. So we expect that there are going to be more exit from the government. My question is, do you think Charles Keter leading the way in this government, in this cabinet exit is ceremonial? Is it sending a message that really the walk away that William Ruto was talking about is not going is going to happen and it's not only on the members of parliament but even people who are PS cabinet secretaries and people who are within government but they support William Samoy Ruto what do you think for the record this is what i think that the civil servants who are in offices because of William Ruto Many of them will leave the government. And this is the reason. Because for anyone who is going to remain there, even if he is not going to seek an elective seat and has decided he's going to remain in government, that person is going to be branded by UDA team as a traitor. Take that to bank. They believe that this exit that is going to happen after MPs resigned and joined UDA and cabinet secretaries also leave cabinet and join, it is going to be seen as if they are walking away from the government. So any other person who shall have remained in Jubilee government will be seen a traitor. Guys, if you are watching this video and you have not yet subscribed, take a second and subscribe. 
also click the notification bell because in this video I am going to analyze to you critically why I think that these civil servants who are resigning from government are going to find it very rough in the ground. And straight to my point number one, the first thing, the first challenge that they are going to have is the nomination campaigns. Most of those CS, really, and, and cabinet people who have been civil servants, they have little time to campaign because they're resigning on 9th February. Between February to April, they're supposed to prepare, then they go for nominations. Now, going for nominations with seasoned politicians is going to work against them because they have not yet campaigned. Secondly, even if you lose at nomination, you know, the thrust of moving to another party is not going to be easy because you've already made a decision that you're going with party A. And how about, the question is very simple, how about if they lose in nominations? So the ones who are going to have an easy way is the ones who are going to, because political parties are individual, individually owned. In UDA, if you can give William Ruto what he needs, you are going to get the ticket. In ODM, if you can part with your finances very well, you can breach the protocols and get the ticket. And guys, I am not lobbying for a forced democracy. But you can get them under what I said as negotiated democracy. The boardroom democracy. The, the ones who are going to succeed with boardroom, boardroom democracy are really fine. Secondly, and this one is going to start as early as next week. If you're going to resign from government and go against the government, the government will come for you. Many of them are going to see harassment, rebirth of cases of corruption, perhaps in their ministerial positions or the ones who had ever served in the county government or in any other position. Because I want to give you a good example is of the Senate Speaker Kenneth Lusaka. Kenneth Lusaka wanted to go and vie for Bungoma gubernatorial race. But I read, I think I read in the Star that he is being pushed by President Uhuru Kenyatta to forfeit that. And if he has to go for that seat, he has to go through Azimula Umoja. And the commentator in that article was actually saying that he was told that if he doesn't tow the, the, the line and goes to seek that vote with the UDA, then remember the Wilbarrow case, it is going, it is not yet over. It is going to be revived. And it is going to be very difficult for them to leave government, then go out there and campaign against government. Because if you join UDA and you're going to attend some of these rallies, it's going to be very difficult. That is why you will realize that Anwai Guru is more active and can really talk negative about government when he is talking when she is talking in kirinyaga but when uda is carrying other rallies and other parts of the country she's so keen on how she trades her business so these uh, civil servants are gonna have that as a biggest challenge secondly the ground is very hostile for them because they will be judged on the scorecard if you served as a PS, you served as a cabinet secretary, the challenge they have is this. You might be in a docket that government did not implement a multi-billion project in your area. For example, Cecil Karioki is eyeing Nyandarwa governorial seat. If she goes to Nyandarwa and she did not take any water project there, it is very difficult to convince the Nyandarwa residents, voters, that she's going to bring a change when she was in government and she did not bring any change. So the ones who are going to have, find it easy are the CS who maybe resigns, goes and, for example, uh, goes and seeks the seats in those areas where government have performed. Because again, not all other places have the footprints of the government. A good example is Nyanza. For example, if someone, if a CS from Nyanza, and I think the only CSS from Nyanza is Omamo and, and Tuju, 
uh, CS without portfolio. If Tuju resigns and goes to seek an elective seat or a governor seat in Nyanza, he has a very good scorecard because the handshake, the government that was formed after a handshake, really had some very good goodies for Kisumu and better part of the Nyanza. There was a water project that Uhuru launched in game. I think a week after that week, then uh, Jacomidio passed on. So for areas where they've seen the footprints of government, someone residing from government to go and seek elective seat is have some he has a scorecard to defend. But I don't want to blame the CS and the cabinet uh, and 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 uh, and the pump, pump, uh, uh, civil servants because some of them have a challenge. They were in the national politics. They were not in the ground politics. For example, a cabinet secretary eyeing a governor's seat and an MP. An MP will be judged on CDF and Odono roads, which are done by national government. But a CS will be asked, you are in the national government, you want to come to the county government. What did you do to the national government? That is a question that these guys are going to struggle to answer. That one I can tell you. Lastly, another problem that I see they are going to have Hapambele is their fate when they don't win. If I am a CS and you have to trade carefully, if you step out of that government, I think you will really vie with Uda and finance Azimio or finance Azimio or, or vie with Azimio but finance Uda so that you have all the footprints. In any case that any government comes in, you can't be considered. But there are many of them who have never been, have never won seats. Now they want to go and vie, and it's going to be very rough for them because some of in those all those counties, I think, in 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 Meru, Kiretu Murung is an incumbent. It's not very easy to deal to do away with an incumbent. Even in Nyandarwa, there is an incumbent there. It's going not going to be very easy but the ones that are going to areas where there is a transition for example kericho they can easily run with it so guys that's my analysis on what i think is going to happen and you can also tell us what do you think of these resignations the fate of the cabinet and some of the things that are going to be done i want to agree with mdavadi that uhura is going to give cabinet slots to some of these MPs, to, to the areas that were never in cabinet to try to move those areas, uh, to try to move those areas back to Jubilee government, especially the Western Kenya. Guys, that's my analysis. And also tell us what do you think.